Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us um, this afternoon. Uh, my name is Karina Kwok, and I'm the Head of Professional Practices and Community at IHRP. Sorry, I was just told that I have stopped my video. I'll start that again. So welcome, uh, everyone, for joining us this afternoon uh, to our four-part IHRP Tech Talk webinar series. And it is our pleasure to partner with HR Tech SG to explore how we can equip the HR community with the right knowledge and insights on the latest trends and platforms on the digital HR space. Harnessing these technologies can actually enable HR to gain greater efficiencies and free up your time for strategic value added activities that help your organization transform and grow. Today, in this world of unprecedented disruptions and with the increasing virtualization of the workplace, it is imperative for our HR teams to plan for the road ahead by laying a strong foundation of a new digital workplace and workforce. So in view of the continued evolution and disruption of technology, MOM and IHRP have commissioned a research study that's coming due, uh, will be published soon, September 30th, at the HRM Asia's Online HR Tech Festival, Asia 2020. And with this Tech Talk series, our HR Tech 2.0 COP programming and the new launch of our IHRP um, HR Tech Skill Batch, these are just some initiatives that IHRP is putting in place to start to prepare our community for the technology and digital adoption journey ahead. So before I start uh, to pass over the floor to Sriram, who is actually going to be our moderator, let me just cover some of the um, housekeeping rules. I think some of you may already be quite familiar with it, having been um, frequent uh, attendees at some of our webinars. But just to cover it quickly, we are recording this session so that we'll be able to post it uh, for your download um, once the webinar is over. And then um, the moderator will later introduce our speakers who will be sharing a little bit more about their RPA journey with us. So if you would like to ask questions, you can see at the bottom of the screen there, there's a Q&A functionality in your Zoom console. So please feel free at any time during this webinar to start typing in your questions at this, as they pop to mind. Uh, we would request uh, that you kindly refrain from taking any screenshots of the presentation slides. Um, because some of these materials are copyrighted. We will be providing um, the proof slides by the speakers to webinar attendees as in our follow-up email. Uh, and if you would like to uh, on forward or re redistribute those slides that we sent you as follow-up, we just uh, kindly request that you write to IHRP. We'll share the email later to seek permission so that we can uh, provide appropriate context for the intended sharing. Thank you in advance for your kind understanding and cooperation. Uh, now I'm going to do a very quick introduction of the moderator before I pass it over to Sriram to take us um, across this webinar. So Sriram is the founder and CEO of HR Tech SG, and uh, we're very proud that he's actually one of our early certified uh, senior professionals as well. He has over two decades of HR experience where he has played leadership roles in the Singtel Group Enterprise and NASDAQ listed Cognizant Technology Solutions. He is a certified strengths coach and very passionate about the HR tech space. In fact, he's been studying the Singapore HR tech landscape closely over the past few years and have co-developed and published the Singapore HR tech market map with Adrian Tan, who is also one of our IHRP senior professionals. As a founder and analyst of the HR Tech SG, he works very closely with enterprises to identify best technology solutions for their talent related needs, researching over 90 niche solution providers that operate in the Singapore tech marketplace. Thank you, Sriram, for your partnership and support. So over to you to take us through the webinar. Thank you very much, Karina. Uh, hello, everybody. As part of IHRP's HR Tech Task Force, our key focus has been to enable the Singapore HR community to adopt a digital mindset and future-proof them by making them HR Tech ready. This webinar series, as Karina mentioned, is an endeavor towards that goal. Because HR teams that focus on technology has definitely been 
able to show sustainable economic value and better workplace experience. Interesting thing is, right, um, we've all seen memes in uh, the social media. COVID-19 has been the accelerator for the greatest digital transformation that we are seeing in our lifetime. In fact, it has impacted every function of the HR department across enterprises. It's changed the way we attract and hire talent, the way we work, how we work, how we measure productivity and performance of our employees, how do we communicate and engage with our teams, how do we price their jobs and reward employees, all of it has been impacted. And that's why over the last six months, we've seen a strong demand for digital HR tools in Singapore. As mentioned in the slide, the HR teams are also under immense pressure uh, because they have to start delivering more with less. The leadership is asking for data-driven decision-making to ensure that is return on investment on every dollar spent. And finally, the Singapore government has been strongly nudging all enterprises to adopt technology-enabled productive, productivity-focused approach. So all of these is resulting in this strong demand for digital HR tools. On the slide, you see the 2020 Singapore HR Tech market map that Adrian Tan and HRTech.SG co-created. We have mapped for the benefit of the HR teams in Singapore, over 160 service providers across all of these HR categories. 160 service providers across talent acquisition, development, engagement, operations, rewards, analytics, planning, HRMS spaces. So you don't have to go anywhere beyond this market map to actually identify the service provider. You can download the market map for free from the link that is provided in the slide, bit.ly slash 2020 HR tech market map. The next slide. The IHRP four part webinar series actually follows the trajectory of a HR tech adoption by any organization. So we are starting from operational aspect and steadily moving towards more strategic objectives. The first webinar today, we're going to talk about RPA and how it can significantly help uh, HR operations. On 28th August, we are going to have HR talent acquisition practitioners and recruitment tech service providers talk about how to create best in class talent acquisition and candidate experience. The third webinar, we are going to talk about how to create best in class employee engagement and employee experience leveraging HR tech. And the final webinar, we're going to talk about talent development and L&D technologies. The unique aspect of this series, I'm uh, sorry, the previous slide. The unique aspect of this series is that we're going to adopt a use case based approach. So no gyan, as they say, is just going to be use cases. Uh, that we will be showcasing across enterprises. And uh, we're going to have a balance of both HR practitioners and HR tech product providers on the panel so that you get a 360 perspective. I'm sure you will enjoy the series. Next slide. Today, we're going to talk about how robotic process automation, RPA, can be a great way to start your digital HR transformation journey. So over the past years, RPA has moved from a fringe application and has seen wider adoption. But you know, we were very surprised when we were trying to do a survey amongst Singapore enterprises, large, small, medium enterprises to find out how many of them adopted RPA for the HR function. Mm, we were quite surprised. So that's why we have a small poll after this to uh, talk about it. But in this, in this webinar today, we're going to talk about how RPA can help, um, how RPA can help you in your employee onboarding, recruitment, benefits administration, health plan, and policy issuance aspects. So this webinar today is going to be a feast for all those who are embarking on the RPA journey. The next slide. As mentioned, we have a quick poll. Can we run the poll now? And we want to see 
how many of you have actually used RPA in your HR functions? And this will give a great perspective to the speakers to ensure they are able to do the messaging accordingly. I'm sure IHRP members remember last year, uh, Yan Hong Lee of DBS Bank hosted all of us at the DBS Bank uh, Changi Business Park facility where we showcased where the DBS Bank showcased their RPA journey. Hmm. So the results uh, more or less uh, corroborates very clearly what we have encountered. So over 75% of the participants today uh, from Singapore enterprises have not implemented any RPA for their HR function. So we can end the poll right now. That gives a great perspective. Okay. So that's 75%. So we move to the first speaker of the day. Uh, the next slide. The first speaker of the day is uh, Jason, uh, who's a director at Simplify Next. Uh, Jason has got extensive experience in IT strategy and technology transformation. He specializes in automation, analytics, and AI. So he's, he's, a wealth of, he's got a wealth of talent, which I hope all of you can really tap into. At Simplify Next, he's responsible for overall project delivery, adoption, and enablement across the whole of Singapore government project. So he is the project director for RPA implementations across various Singapore ministries, agencies, and statutory boards. Uh, he's going to talk about two of the government agencies that have uh, implemented RPA for the HR use. Um, he's UiPath and Blue Prism Foundation certified practitioner. Uh, thank you for accepting to be a speaker, Jason. Our next speaker for the day is Vincent Tan, a HRP senior professional, vice president group HR of Comfort Delgro. He has been with Comfort Delgro group for the last seven years. He's been playing a leading role in their HR transformation, and which is what he's going to showcase to us. Uh, as you know, CDG has got nine local subsidiaries and footprint across six countries apart from Singapore. He supports the group CHRO across the full spectrum of HR at the group level. Apart from this job, he also is the HR partner for the overseas BUs in Australia and China, and also manages the Comfort Delgro Insurance and Comfort Delgro Driving Center. Thank you very much, Vincent, for being our speaker today. Finally, we have Connie, who's the head of human resources of Blue Prism. So we were struggling to look around to find speakers who have implemented um, uh, um, RPA in their HR functions. So we went back to Connie and said, hey, Connie, instead of sending your sales team, can you come as a HR practitioner and talk to us about how Blue Prism has implemented RPA uh, for your HR function? Best of both worlds, as you see. Uh, a, a service provider and also a HR practitioner bundled into one. So with a 12 years experience working for startups to large enterprises, having worked across four continents. In fact, she has had stints in New York, Bangalore, and now Singapore. So we're going to have uh, um, Connie talk extensively about how Blue Prism has used RPA across three of their functions. So it's going to be really a feast for all of those of you, the 75% of you who are looking to embark on the RPA journey and the remaining 25% of you who have already started. But if you're trying to find out what your next journey is, you've come to the right place. And now hand it over to Jason for, the, for his presentation. Over to you, Jason. Thanks, Riyam. Uh, move over to the next slide, please. Yeah, so I'll go through the next of 10 minutes trying to cover some topics. And I thought it would be good to start um, by saying that, that RPA implementation is actually a journey. It's not a one-time implementation um, and a couple of parts within the journey itself. So if you look at the slide in front of you, um, most people uh, start off with what we call task automation, right? And, and, and the easiest example are macros that you might have or might not have used. Um, 
But the problem with macros in Excel is that it's, it's someone unmanaged, it's not governed, uh, and it takes some level of skill set to actually modify it if you want to make some, some small changes here and there, right? And, and this is where RPA comes in because it solves the, the, the rest of the, the issues that the macros or task automation used to have. Um, and it's also important to note that task, both task automation and RPA, they are very process driven. And they do come with some limitations as well, right? Uh, because usually RPA does not like um, unstructured data, right? To, to have a successful and, and a stable RPA robot running uh, some of your processes, uh, most of the time it needs to be structured, it needs to be rule-based, and it does not require any human judgment. Um, so you might ask, so what if I have a task or an activity that, that, that requires human judgment and requires some form of unstructured data, uh, data like resumes, academic transcripts, certificates. Uh, so this is where the, the next part of the journey is, right, which is all revolved around analytics and, and AI. Um, and with those, uh, we actually see and more and more of our customers are asking in, in those areas and, and different people are different parts within this maturity journey. And I thought it'd be good that, that I put on the, uh, the latest Gartner Magic Quadrant uh, on the right hand side of the screen just to illustrate and, and to just to demonstrate um, what type of tools uh, are there in the market, right? The, 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 usually the big three is referred to by, by Blue Prism, UiPath and Automation Anywhere. Um, but what we see within the one or two years, right? Um, there are a lot of new players in the market, right? Players like SAP, IBM and Microsoft they are starting to inch themselves into this space by, by certain acquisitions that they made uh, within the past 18 months. Okay, next slide, please. Um, so what are the typical benefits that, that, that you're able to, to get out of RPA? I mean, most people think of the, the, the cost factor and the productivity factor, uh, but there are certain factors like what you see on the six hexagons on your right side um, that is for you to think about as well, right? So I'll give you two examples. So um, last month I was talking to one of the research institutes here in, in Singapore and they wanted to automate part of their onboarding process. So have, running through the process, I, I, I told the HR director, um, and I was quite frank with, with her, right? I would say that, but they only have two or three new joiners a month. So is it worthwhile trying to automate their onboarding process because they will not get the, what we call a return on investment, a good return of investment out of it. Uh, but, but she said something quite, quite interesting, right? She said it's not about uh, having a good ROI, but rather um, they want their small HR team to focus more on higher value work, right? Like, for example, improve employee engagement rather than the mundane administrative task that, that takes away uh, what they're supposed to do at, a, at the core of the function. Um, so that's the first example. The second example that I want to share is, is one of local banks here. Um, it's not really a HR process, uh, but more of a finance process. Um, and it's related to loans processing. But what the team faced was that there's a lot of challenges because the team of six, um, every month someone will resign and they have a huge retention problem, right? So for, for, for that organization, the main business driver is to solve that retention problem uh, because the process by itself is very repetitive, very mundane, uh, and, 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 and very task based that, that nobody actually wants to do it. And that's why they, 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 they embark on their RPA implementation to, to solve that particular business function. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the first use case I wanted to share was for, uh, was for IBF in, in, in Singapore. Uh, and this was for recruitment purposes. Um, they do their recruitment in, 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 in stages. So, at any given time during peak season, they have about 100 of profiles to actually crawl through, right? So they had to go to multiple portals to download the applications, consolidate it, um, and then they have to open each and every application, open their resumes and, and, and find for the right fit. And um, it took them about many, many, many days uh, just to actually complete all the tasks that they have to do, right? And, and they have two full-time people doing that. So what we implemented for them was, was a couple of robots to log into different websites, pull out all the information, consolidate, and then help them to do a bit of the shortlisting. Um, and we do the shortlisting in two ways. Number one, 
uh, through the declaration that the candidates have, have, have put on. Maybe, for example, for a particular role, uh, you might want to prioritize a local candidate, right? So that's something that, that, that is quite easy for RPA robot to, to, to handle. Um, but more than that, we actually uh, go in and open each of the resumes and um, look through certain keywords or phrases just to help the HR recruitment team uh, shortlist the applications, right? So instead of uh, having to look through 100 applications uh, a week, they only need to look through about 10 or 15 a week. And, and you see the sort of benefits that we gain out of this process, right? Um, what used to take 12 minutes was done in less than two minutes. And over four months, they managed to save close to 70 man days of, of work. Okay, next slide, please. So the second use case is also for, for Singapore Public Agency. Um, and this is more for benefit administration. So what happened uh, in the past before the RPA was that um, a, a, uh, their HR staff had to spend like a couple of hours every day uh, just to process some claims. Right? And these claims are specifically uh, childcare, maternity, paternity, and claims like this, uh, where they need to download uh, from the internal system, uh, do a bit of verifications to ensure that, that the claim is valid. And then they had to go through a couple of steps within the external portal, or this is the MSS website, right? So if you look at what, what it was done for them, um, I think the key here is that what used to take two officers uh, two hours every day, and uh, now it's fully automated, right? Uh, so they only have a couple of robots running now, and the officers are, are free to do uh, their, their core duties, uh, which is more important and higher value. Okay, next slide, please. Um, so I mean, there's, there's a lot of people uh, in, in a call now, and I'm, I'm sure that uh, the, uh, all of you each uh, in various stages within the, the automation journey, right? Some of you, you might just ask, are starting the journey. Uh, some departments within your organization might have already started the journey. Uh, I mean, in, in, in some of you, you are actually trying to see how you're able to institutionalize automation uh, within your organization fully. Um, so what I would want to share is maybe three things, right? Or three takeaways, uh, how to be successful uh, when you look at an RPA implementation, right? So the first point that I want to make is that you need to be able to understand what the big picture and what outcomes you like to get in the end and by when, right? Only when you have that in mind, then you're able to plan the journey accordingly, uh, trying to find the right people for, for the various roles that are required uh, for an automation journey. Um, the second, uh, which I find is more important is that um, to be able to be successful in something like this, uh, there needs to be some form of capability development within your organization. Uh, by, by talking to, to many, many customers, I mean, some of them are, are struggling to scale, some of them have uh, stopped altogether, uh, but there's a few who are doing really well. And, and one of the key differences for, for those that are doing really well is that they have built some form of capability within their organization. Right. Um, although I'm I'm part I'm I'm from a company where to that implements RPA services, so it might be a bit counterproductive for me to mention it. But if you want to be successful, you cannot rely 100% on 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 your implementation partners. Right. Um, you need to identify, train, or maybe even hire a couple of people so that um, you're able to 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 embark and sustain this journey together. And I guess that that's one uh, of the key success factors I see for those organizations that uh, have, to have been doing well, right? So the first one is about understanding the journey and plan ahead. Uh, second is about capability uh, development. Um, and the last one is that projects like this or journeys like this, uh, it can't be fully driven by IT or fully driven by, by the business or HR side, right? Um, the organizations that I see doing well are, are those where they have a good partnership between IT and HR. And, and both have a part in play in it. Uh, and, and both complement each other gaps um, that, that, uh, that what I see is, is, is really key to, to be able to sustain this journey. Okay, with that, uh, I can move on to the next slide. I think that's all I wanted to cover as part of my 10 minutes and I hand it over back to, to Shriyam. Thank you very much, uh, Jason. A bang on target, I should say. Uh, we've seen a couple of uh, participants who have raised their hands. If you could put in your questions in the Q&A box, uh, we could help answer it. Uh, so you could lower your hands in, this, in the chat box. 
uh, we now hand it over to Vincent Chan to talk to us about the Comfort Delgro journey. But before that, we have a quick poll. And can we run the poll now? Which area is critical in your opinion for investing in HR tech? Is it talent acquisition, finding and attracting talent? Is it improving the employee experience, talent engagement? Is it developing people to reach their full potential, something like talent development? Or is it ensuring well-being, diversity, and inclusivity aspects? Um, we want to ensure that we will take notice of these results and incorporate it suitably in the forthcoming webinar series. So may I request all the participants to just take a couple of seconds to answer this poll, which could really benefit the entire community. And as you would see, um, Jason was talking about bots and robots. Now, when you, when you go to uh, Connie's presentation, you will see the term digital worker. So each company internally, what they have done is they've called it different names. And in fact, they have a name for a digital worker. So you will soon hear about the name of the bot at Comfort Delgro. You will hear the name of the bots from Connie, which clearly shows that tomorrow as HR teams, we need to manage both the human and the machines together. Thank you. We could end the poll now. Thank you very much. So which clearly shows um, over 50% of you really want us to focus on, want to focus on how to improve your employee experience. That's really helpful information. Thank you very much. I now hand it over to Vincent Tan. Next slide. Yeah, thanks, Jerome. Hello, uh, I'm Vincent. Yeah, but uh, bear with me as I try to, uh, as usual, get to the next slide, which uh, probably my screen is, uh, my laptop is a bit old, couldn't. Cross over to the next one. Okay. Oops. Okay. Just to check that uh, all of you are able to see. Okay. Yes, can Vincent, we can see your presentation, but not in the presentation mode. Uh, yeah. Okay, sorry about that. I think I have some problem. Yes, now we can see. Go ahead. Vincent. Okay, yeah. Uh, okay, just to uh, share with uh, all of you. Uh, again, my name is Vincent from Comfort Delgro. Uh, I will share uh, our company's RPA journey, Comfort Delgro's RPA journey, as a user, okay, uh, and the issues that we may uh, have to think about, the logic that we have to think about as we consider uh, whether we want to go on RPA, uh, the reasons, the factors, the type of RPA processes that we want to go into, and also, you know, uh, finally, the consequences uh, of it all. So, okay, I think that's it. Okay, so uh, common to all of us, uh, I think there must be uh, a reason uh, for all of us who want to embark on organizational changes. Uh. Okay, so uh, for CDG, uh, broad picture wise, we started our group level transformation journey sometime in 2017-2018, where you know that uh, during that time uh, we were faced with serious competition from Uber. And we know that in order uh, for the company to survive or to do better, we need to take the uh, business challenges head on. Uh, and group level wise, you know, operations and stuff like that. Everybody start to look at uh, digitizing their processes, their business, etc. And for HR, when we look at it, uh, we look at what we can do to be able to continue to support the business effectively and uh, to be relevant as well. So uh, translate that down to the HR, we uh, look at two key issues. First, 
the HR review to be able to support the business. Okay, so uh, what we did was that we reorganized our 140 over HR staff, you know, uh, supporting nine local business units into four verticals, what we call the uh, center of excellence and also uh, shared services. So uh, they are in the areas of human capital, the HRIS information systems, the common band part, and the industrial relations, so that uh, we can have a consistent approach to tripartite issues and uh, you know, at the SNAF level, uh, what we what we'll be able to contribute, etc. And we also look at harmonizing the HRIS in the various in the various uh, business units because they have a lot of legacy issues. They have a lot of uh, you know most of the business units join you know during the during the MA journey and they have their own uh, systems and we need to we need to make sure that we harmonize that as part of our digitization process. So uh, when we look at the HR digitization, uh, we are looking at, we are looking at uh, first and foremost, what's going to happen five years, 10 years, even 20 years down the road. Wouldn't be 20 years, uh, that's usually for the government sector. Uh, but what's going to happen for the next five years or 10 years. And we know for sure that the manpower landscape is going to change drastically in terms of the demographics, the resources available, et cetera even the number of people who want to join you as HR. We also uh, look at, in order to be efficient, to maximize processes, processes effectively, what are the things we need to, uh, what are the RPA pilots we want to introduce? Okay, so uh, we look at the various uh, options, uh, like what Jason has shared just now also, you know, whether is it on the onboarding or whether is it in submitting claims, uh, for submitting claims to government agencies for, Paternity leave, maternity leave, or even uh, uh, NS leave, etc. You know, so so that's RPA. That's one thing that we look about. We are also a little bit. We try to be a little bit more ambitious. We look at the app. We look at chatbots, because we know that uh, in terms of uh, HR transactional issues, uh, 60, 70 percent of them, of the HR queries can be answered by chatbot. Of information can be gotten through chatbot. So that's one thing we want to go into as well. Uh, so that one is ongoing. So these are the two key focus areas for us. Okay. Uh, and uh, as we look into the digitization, you know, and uh, trying to put out a business case to CEOs, to MD, to chairman, I think uh, this is a very obligatory slide. Uh, why, why we need to digitize. Uh, okay. So uh, I, I just share out of many, many things, I just share one. Uh, and that is usually cost for companies like us, you know, who have to answer to shareholders. It is all about cost. And we try to translate that, you know, to both direct cost and indirect cost, as you can see from the slide. So that uh, from here, we can put up our various narrative, our various justifications on why do we need to go into, uh, to go into uh, uh, digital processes. And one thing which uh, made the CEOs, made the ND and chairman very excited is uh, when we told them that uh, if you use RPA, if you use chatbot, they can work for you 24 seven. They won't throw tantrums. They won't get MC. They won't apply for annual leave. And you can continue to abuse them even when you're sleeping. And that got them a little bit excited. So, uh, but really it's from the cost part. And for us, it is the uh, procedures and processes. Okay, so uh, when we start to get in touch with uh, the vendors and the technical people and trying to understand how we can implement uh, we were told that it's a very simple process. Okay, uh, basically three steps, like what you are seeing here. First, we just need to know, you know, uh, we, we need to work on a POC, proof of concept. Okay, what are the processes that we want? There are many, many HR processes. Okay, all of us know that. We have been doing that uh, for all our lives, you know. Uh, anything can be digitized. Huh? The question to you is, what do you want to digitize? What do you want uh, to be your RPA processes that help, that give you the maximum benefits okay, uh, to what you're doing now? And after you have identified what you want to do, then of course uh, is doing the programming, working out the working out the uh, the coding and you know the what if what if scenario so that you can come up with a pilot and that will take another 10 to 12 weeks. And finally, you know. It is just roll out. Uh, 
I think all of us who, who work with uh, vendors on projects, we know that these are the basic three things. Okay. Uh, so it, it seems to be very simple and uh, all of us are bought into it. We are all very excited. Okay. And when we, and as we go along, we need to, we need to convince management, convince our own HR uh, colleagues, partners, and those who may be potentially affected. And of course, the CEO, the ops people, even your other corporate services people who work with you, like the IT, the finance, we need to have a narrative. So we look at three key areas. First is the strategic space. Okay, out of so many processes that we can choose, you know, what do we want to deploy as the RPA pilot? What do we want to start off with? And we want to start off with something that we are very sure we can succeed, that there is good enough ROI, so that uh, it can convince the CEOs and top management to continue to throw money to you so that you can continue with your many, many other RPA, sub, uh, RPA projects that will come out in the next one, two years or two, three years. Okay. So uh, we have to look at the strategic space. We have to look at the staff engagement. Basically, when you do something, right, we all know uh, when we do organizational change, some people will be more affected than other people. What is your communications to them? How are you going to explain to them? And this includes the finance staff, the IT staff, and even the combat bank staff who up to this point of time are dealing with the insurance. You know, When we have new employees on board, then there will be these staff who will just uh, you know, uh, fill in all the necessary information, send an email or send an update you know, to, uh, to the insurance. We have our own insurance called Comfort Delgro uh, uh, Insurance Brokers. Okay, uh, send to them and tell them you know to onboard this for GHNS, uh, group outpatient and surgery, uh, RICA and all the stuff. Okay, then what is going to happen to this stuff? You know? And of course, uh, in terms of process and procedure, we are mindful that it cannot be just for today's process. The forms, the template, the sequence, and even you know uh, when you look at we write on SAP. So even if subsequently there are going to be changes in the SAP architect and uh, you know the platform. How can the RPA continue to be able to, to function when we have system changes and when we have got new requirements changes? Maybe because of uh, MOM regulations or stuff like that. So we have to look into all this. Okay, uh, the next few slides are very technical. I am not going to go through, I'm just going to show you to give you, to give all of us here a sense of what needs to be done. And uh, to to, uh, to further uh, comment on what Jason has said just now. That is why you need to get the required people with the necessary skill sets to make sure that your RPA journey can continue to sustain, can continue uh, to improve. Okay, So we have to map out you know, our folders, to map out what needs to be done, uh, you know, to map out the various uh, processes uh, for different scenarios, like for example, uh, if we need it to be completed, you know what? What do we need to fit to the uh, to the RPA board? Uh, what will it generate? For example, it will generate uh, land ID. It will generate email address. It will generate call centers uh, for the finance, and it will also uh, link up uh, with the insurance uh, to enroll the new employee. Okay. What happens if it's partially uh, uh, completed, and then you will receive the HR will receive uh, a a prompt, you know, or if it's fear, etc. So, uh, I know of uh, some of my friends, okay, when they introduce RPA and when they start the journey of digitization, the companies have to look at the type of HR competencies that they need to recruit, you know, and that's why we have got the HRIS specialists who are able even to do programming for you, for your HR projects. Okay, but uh, having done it for the last uh, one to two years, uh, what have changed for the company? And specifically out of the HR transformation, what have changed for the HR uh, community? Okay, for all of us. So first, I think uh, all of us are more ready to adopt, to embrace that te uh, technology. Especially all of us uh, who uh, since uh, April, we all have to work from home. So uh, the acceptance of technology has to be there. And you Jason, also, uh, sorry, to intervene, Jason. You have a minute more, okay, uh, thanks, and yeah. maybe uh, some of those you could cover in the Q and A. Okay, Thank no you. problem. Yeah. So in terms of time savings, uh, which is what uh, will be a key narrative, 
Of course, uh, we not only improve the keying in into the SAP system from the many, many forms that we used to do, we also remove the entire processes to apply for land ID, email creation, uh, insurance submissions and coverage, etc. And of course, uh, we also hope uh, that uh, our HR community are better and more professionalized. Okay. And uh, while all these are ongoing, we also, of course, uh, embark on our chatbot. So today, Taxi is supported by a chatbot. Her name is called Cindy. Uh, you know, and we hope to continue the journey uh, as we continue to do more HR tech for the company. That's all I have. Uh, and I will be happy to uh, answer uh, whatever you have uh, in the Q&A later. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vincent. Over to you, Connie. Thanks very much. Okay. Hello, everybody. I hope that you are enjoying your time here like I am and you're having a great Friday. Uh, so my name is Connie Pashala. I am the head of HR for the Asia Pacific region here at Blue Prism. And the product that we have is RPA or intelligent automation. And, you know, I saw the poll earlier that 70 something percent of you have not used RPA before internally. So I recognize that the term may sound a little bit complicated. And while the technology behind it is, is very sophisticated, the solutions themselves are actually quite simple. So I'm going to be talking about that. So we'll go on to the next one. And we're going to start with some recent examples in our HR team. So the first box. What we had is lots of documents sitting in SharePoint for employees. And we had a need to move them all into the HR system that we have under every employee's profile. The challenge we had is that we had no systems connected and no APIs that we could use. So it would have been a potentially very frustrating piece of work for a human to have to do. And the other problem on top of it is there's a potential for error. You know, imagine having one sensitive document for an employee land in another person's profile. So what we did is we employed a digital worker and we treat them as colleagues here internally. So we give them names and the digital worker for this particular process is named Elizabeth. The way we name all of our fleet internally is after the UK royal family. They have, I mean, there's amazing pictures. I'll show you one later. Uh, and for this piece of work, we had the queen, Elizabeth. So what we did is we set up workflows with basic rules and uh, how to handle exceptions if they came up. And the result here is so far over 7,500 of those documents have been moved. It saved us over a month of time. And Elizabeth worked really hard. She took no time off. She had no complaints. She made no mistakes. And for our team, it was delightful. So the next box here, and this one is just from last week, actually. So quite recently, we had a new code of conduct published internally, and we needed every person to sign it and then have that filed. So again, that would have been manual work, and we put Elizabeth on that job. And so far, she has saved us 80 hours of manual work. And the final box, we had uh, recently gone through a bonus scheme change. And for many of you on the call, perhaps you just had your annual bonus cycle, and we know there is quite a bit of admin work involved there, you know, the paperwork itself. And we just, we didn't have the time. We didn't have the team for it. We had the pandemic to respond to, of course. So we used Elizabeth's help. That allowed us to meet our timeline, and it saved us 26 hours already. So in sum, at the bottom, if we click to the next one, uh, that, that's Elizabeth, so she's super cute there. Uh, she has been able to process over 9,000 transactions over these three automations, and this alone has saved us 356 hours back to our team. And that time, we're able to focus on more value add work. You know, again, the, the pandemic response was quite critical for us, focusing on keeping employee engagement high. This journey wasn't always this way. So if we go on to the next one, this shows where we were just four years ago in 2016. We were an SME. You know, we were 40 people based in an office in northern UK. But if we click to the next one, today 
We are now 1,100 people, which is a massive growth in a short period of time over all of these countries and cities that you see represented here. We cover customers in 70 sectors and 170 countries. What all of that means is there were definitely growing pains and there still are, you know, we are still growing. So we had to reevaluate our priorities, how we're using tech to accomplish what we need to do because we had and still have actually a fairly small HR team with a big scope of work. So speaking of role, if we click on to the next one, this is kind of how we define that. So before automation, if you look at that green part at the top, that's the value add. And this is where we want to be, right? I mean, we want to be business partners. We want to provide our expertise. And the yellows and the red is the business as usual, the BAU. That part is really critical for the HR function, absolutely. But there's ways to shift that ratio. So if we click over to the after automation side of things, uh, if we click again, this one shows a happier ratio, happier for me certainly and my team. So that value add portion is able to increase because we have digital colleagues like Elizabeth who's handling the critical BAU stuff. And you know, this is where we can flex our brain muscles. This is where we can show our expertise. And throughout this process, We've been able to, number one, upskill our team because now they're able to focus on higher value ad work. And number two, in fact, we have grown our team because we're part of that conversation of shaping that business agenda. So one thing I like to do at the end of every month is to go back, look at my calendar, where did I spend my time? You know, how much of it was that value add and how much of it was BAU? And there's shifts to be made every month. And I encourage you to do the same, you know, go back, take a look. What does that ratio look like for you? So if we click to the next one, this is how we uh, kind of show our steps to build towards that value add. On the left-hand side, you see a couple of QR codes. Those are the journeys that other customers have used within their HR teams. So I encourage you to check that out. And then the steps here is the way we look at it. So the first one is showing efficiency and productivity. The ROI measurement here is clearly time saved and manpower constraints saved. And that goes back to that documentation example at the start that Elizabeth supported. This also is about supporting perhaps new hire enrollments, right? So you might have 15 systems a new hire has to be uh, added to. Some might be very old legacy systems. Some may not have APIs. You don't have to do that manual work. So we have a digital worker to do that. If we move to the next uh, ladder then, the performance part, this is where the ROI is shifting. So it's shifting now to more core kind of business performance metrics within the HR team. And one of the ones we have today that's important is, is DNI, right? Inclusion, diversity, and belonging. And for us, one way to impact that metric is through blind CV screening. So what this is, is we've got a digital worker who is, uh, going through CVs of applicants and taking away the identifying information. So that way, when applications are reviewed, there's a decreased chance of unconscious biases creeping in. So you're not judging a person based on the gender they may be or where they may be from, but based on their skills. Another one is chatbot, which my peers before talked about. Uh, our chatbot is named Charlie, so he can support employees 24-7. And the, the last step of that ladder there is, is true transformation. This is what we're always working towards about how do we continue to evolve the HR function by using the right technology. This is you know, exploring possibilities that we don't know about today even. It's thinking about how do we continue to increase that value add box on that ratio. So this is truly the future of work in practice. So the next slide here is my help, uh, my cry for help from many years ago. So back when I was in grad school, I was hired into a mid-sized business as an HR assistant. And I was going to school at night and working during the daytime. And I was really, really excited to be able to put theory into practice. You know, I was learning about HR and organizational uh, psychology. And I hadn't realized when I joined that job, that my 
basically full-time job was to send rejection letters to interview candidates. And it was the typing, printing, and physically mailing of those rejection letters where I spent my time. And that was my compelling moment actually, because before I joined that HR role, I was actually in a frontline role of that business. So a non HR function. And I remember when I was there, the kind of colleagues I had around me had a number of needs or frustrations and the support teams weren't able to listen or address or have the time to do so. And I realized, you know, if we were spending our time sending rejection letters, that's why. So I've since then embraced technology. Uh, there are brilliant products across the entire employee life cycle that you can check out. And I recognize that while today I'm in a tech organization where I can do this, you might be in retail or manufacturing or food and bev, but it's industry agnostic. You know, we don't have to be tech people. I certainly am not to be able to use these solutions. All we need to do is to identify that pain point, like my rejection letters, for instance. And that's the starting point that you need to be able to make your life a little bit easier and increase that value add. So my last slide is just a quick representation of our blueprint for success that we use internally and how we get this process started. We have uh, a, a number of other customers who also use our solution for their HR teams. You know, some others that I'll name are Walgreens, Schroeder's, Siam Commercial Bank, Prudential. So I encourage you to, to start, you know, think about what work you have, what calendar items you have that you want to move, and how an Elizabeth might be able to impact your role. So I have loads more to share about best practice and how to overcome challenges, but I see Shriyam's face, so I'm gonna put an end there and I'm happy to take any questions at the end. Thank you very much, Connie. Um, so in the last 45 minutes, uh, we got to see uh, RPA use cases in recruitment, um, you know, moving to multiple job boards, uh, up, downloading and uploading of uh, CVs. And then Connie was talking about how blind CV screening can actually help as part of your uh, D and I process, uh, diversity and inclusivity uh, to show your unbiasedness. We saw an employee onboarding as uh, Vincent Tan had uh, elaborated. Uh, again, Connie talked about info, info privacy compliance, policy issuance and signatures, benefit administration. And I just on not just one organization, right? We have been able to see how it's been done at uh, Institute of Banking and Finance, Comfort Delgro, Blue Prism. And in fact, uh, uh, I would urge all of you to uh, click the QR code uh, that Connie had shared and check out more details about how Coca-Cola and DTE Energy have used uh, RPA in their HR functions. So we've also seen Cindy, Elizabeth, Charlie, you call them bots, you call them robots, or you call them digital workers. The reality is we need to start embracing them as part of our day-to-day -day activity. So I see Jolyn, Joanne, and Karen who have raised their hands. May I request you to post your questions in the chat box so that we can help answer it. Um, you know, some lovely questions. Uh, we had question on APA and RPA, uh, which has been answered by James. Uh, we have had questions on difference between RPA and HRIS. I want to point out one question that's been raised, uh, uh, which is on the cost aspect. Uh, in fact, at the HR Tech Task Force of IHRP, we are planning to come up with a, a webinar which only talks about how enterprises, small, medium, large enterprises, know what are the various government grants that are available that HR teams can tap and facilitate it. We would urge you to look through the uh, link that Jason has shared to see how you can avail of those to implement some of these costs. We recently did a survey and uh, what came out was HR folks usually thought cost is prohibitive. You will be surprised to know some of the HR tech tools, RPA costs are not as prohibitive as you uh, really expect it to be. Um, okay, uh, we've seen all of these questions. Any more questions? Uh, we try to answer it live so that, uh, and if you want more details to be provided, the uh, speakers can share details. Um, I have a couple of questions here. Can the leaders share some of the key narratives for HR leaders 
to start a conversation with IT leaders to collaborate on the RPA journey? I think I would throw that question to Vincent. Vincent, how did you go about doing that to convince the CDG management, right? Okay, thanks, Riam, and uh, thanks for the question. I think the issue is not about the IT. Uh, because the IT, just like the HR, if I were to use the word, it's like enablers, like we make things happen. Uh, the question is uh, management. If management does not believe in it, did not give the mandate to go ahead, IT and HR cannot do anything. So the question is about convincing top management. And the narrative, depends. it depends on the profile of your workers. It depends on uh, how the management themselves want to want to grow in this tech space because uh comfort group for example we are labor intensive uh, as you know we've got 100 over uh, hr staff we even got 100 over it staff also and also finance staff everything we do on our own including payroll then the question will be 10 years down the road can i still have 144 hr staff and i think all of us intuitively would know that wow that's going to be challenging because if we look at the education profile of the youngsters nowadays, you know, who wants to join you, you know, to do basic HR. So these are some of the narratives that we have to be on it. And for Comfort Group, we'll be on this. 10 years later, who are the people going to join you? As it is today, the people who left, we already got problems trying to get people to replace. That's one. Of course, uh, when, uh, we, when we embark onto the overall group HR trans uh, group transformation, uh, then we also have to look at HR transformation, IT transformation, finance transformation to support the end state of the business. And that is another narrative that we use. So it really depends on the unique circumstances of your company and which part of the journey are you going into. That's what Connie has shared earlier, actually. Thank you, Vincent. Um, Jason, can I pop this question to you? It says, should companies train their existing HR staff for HR tech roles or recruit from outside? What are the condi uh, considerations to decide, build, or buy? So when you work with your clients, uh, what is the usual scenario and how, how do you go about doing it? Well, firstly, we understand, we get the organization to try to identify within their own team who can play some of the roles, right? It's typically a role like a, like a business analyst role, um, someone to drive the RPA initiative, um, like a process architect. So I think the first step is actually to identify who can play those roles. Uh, so this, this is where we, we, we speak with our customers to define what are the different job descriptions uh, and what type of um, um, trainings they might need, right? Um, and, 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 and there's always a, a training path, an enablement path, if the, the people that you have is, is still not uh, at the stage that you require them to be. And if, of course, if, if all else fails, then this is where I've, I personally help some of my customers uh, hire external people as well. Right, so there, there, are, there, are, there are various uh, steps along the way. I guess the, the first step is always to identify someone internally to, to drive the whole initiative. Thank you, Jason. I see, uh, I see uh, Karina on the screen. Karina, just two more minutes. Uh, there's one final question that I would like to ask uh, uh, Connie. Uh, Connie, it says uh, recruitment RPA. Can it be free of bias since system is actually set up by human and input into the system, um, you know, which RPA can scan the keyword? Maybe not the first part, but what's your take on the first, uh, not on the second part, but on the first part of this question? Yeah, I think that's an important question and, and it's part of the ethical things involved here, right? It's, it's not necessarily replacing the functions of a human. And, and we actually internally have a list of the skill set of a digital worker versus a human that is not to be replaced. And for us, you know, when I think about the blind CV screening example I talked about, now, to be clear, we're not today using the solution to, to review the entire CV. You know, we're, we're doing a simpler part. We're piloting, we're testing, you know, we're removing the identifying information and seeing where we wind up. So in the beginning, there is a bit more work involved because you're using the solution and then using a human and understanding what that gap might be. So it is doing that piloting, doing that testing and understanding the capability of a digital worker versus human and what might not be able to be replaced. Thank you, Connie. Just quick add on. Can you uh, uh, answer this question on some example on compliance and regulatory efforts improvement done in Blue Prism? Outside of the HR team? Uh, do you have some, something to share within the HR function? Uh, so the ones we go back to earlier, right? Um, 
I don't want to repeat the entire thing, but in the beginning when I talked about having to move employee files, it was for a regulatory need. You know, it was it was data protection reasons and privacy reasons. And so that one was was quite simple to set up those rules because it was transferring documents and we're able to set up how that process would look. Uh, outside of HR, there are a ton of compliance examples across all industries. Um, I can't talk about all of them now. We do have an entire website of use case studies, but there is a ton. That's a huge area, absolutely. Thank you very much, Connie. So the two key takeaways for me, one is uh, the HR teams uh, need to adopt a digital HR mindset as uh, Jason did explain, it's a question of build versus buy. I think the HR teams need to adopt a digital HR mindset. The second is don't start with the product, start with the problem that you're trying to solve and then um, you know, incorporate your internal cultural aspects and change management and then uh, go forward in your digital HR transformation journey. Over to you, Karina. Thank you, Sriram. Uh, thanks very much for your partnership and, and role as a moderator. I just want to take this opportunity to once again also thank uh, on behalf of IHRP, Jason, Connie and Vincent for sharing our time uh, with us and sharing very interesting insights. I've really gleaned um, some interesting you know, insights for myself uh, as well regarding you know, the RPA journey. Um, we would greatly appreciate, as you can see, we shared the QR code of our feedback form. Uh, for those of you still online, if you could uh, scan that quickly and provide us with your feedback on any key takeaways that you got from this webinar uh, or any suggested topics that you'd like us to cover for the future, we greatly appreciate that. Um, so, you know, uh, mindful of time, just wanted to thank all of you once again. We head up to about 305 of you join us this afternoon uh, at the webinar. And uh, please keep a lookout for our next installment. We'll be focusing on the topic of talent acquisition uh, in our uh, webinar number two. Thank you all. Take care. Stay safe.